Anyway, anyway. Boom. <laughs> Speaking of changes, <laughs> I hope the predators caught by Chris Hansen have changed. <laughs> uh, yeah, Sunny V, Sunny V. Where are the Chris Hansen predators today? Let's find out. almost said chapter three bills it's so crazy because jojo put it perfectly jojo put it perfectly what this what this uh stage is what this chapter is I, I i think he called it hold on let me look let me look up what it was because i don't even know hold on let me he said it perfectly bro he put it perfectly um hold on let me call him real quick it was perfect oh fuck i forgot we're recording <laughs> we're recording oh what up youtube hold on yeah here we go this video will cover exactly what happened to the six most notable creeps from Hanson vs. Predator, and we're gonna begin by talking about the math tutor Mike Manzi, who's had his life pretty much ruined as a result of the I'm Chris Hanson, No You're Not episode. After arriving at the Sting House, Mike bumped into Chris immediately before trying to make the excuse that he was simply making sure that the 13-year-old girl was safe inside her house. After desperately attempting to leave- That's what- that's what is- I miss this show so much, bro. Just to hear the excuses, just to hear the excuses what uh, that people were saying, bro. Oh my gosh. I, I was literally just trying to make sure she was good. I was actually here to tell her that she should not be talking to me and any men at all. It was just, that's just, I, I find it weird, you know? So I just wanted to tell her that and that's it. And then I was gonna leave, I swear to God. Well then explain the box of condoms. Mike was <laughs> explain why you have the box of condoms and the alcohol. Well. <laughs> It's like, no, you're fucked, you weirdo. Was arrested, taken back to the police station and interrogated for approximately 35 minutes. After release the footage. To which the episode ends with the ex- They need to release these, these, these pedophile footage investigations like they do on the, like, people who be murdering people. And there's like all these videos explanation that because Mike's discussion was pretty clean prior to the meetup, he was only sentenced to three years probation, meaning that he avoided any time in prison what? and wasn't registered on any unsavory lists. What? However, this isn't to say that Mike's life has been easy ever since the episode went live. In late 2021, a conversation was leaked with one of the show's editors who explained that the head of security, Ron Knight, was actually Mike Manzi's uncle and that there is a part that never aired where Manzi is insisting to Knight to let him go because he's known Manzi since birth. This is apparently why Manzi made such an effort to convince the crew to let him leave peacefully, yet his uncle told Manzi the best thing he could do is go through the garage and remain silent, which Manzi obviously didn't do. As a result of the episode, Mike now hates his uncle, which has more than likely led to the decline of Manzi's other family relationships. However, the most interesting thing revealed in the message exchange was that Manzi was an avid watcher of TCAP back in the day, which explains why he recognized Chris Hansen immediately. Mike has since been found on a felony dating site, as well as on Facebook under a different name, where a Reddit user was able to get this picture, as well as apparently have a conversation with Mike, who stated that he gets recognized very often, and that Mike actually seems like a very chilled out dude. On Chris Hansen's podcast, Chris explained that Mike is no longer working in education. As far as we know, a felony dating, so that means everybody on the site has to have a felony? He is not tutoring or teaching anywhere. He lives with his parents. Which would explain two recently surfaced photos of Mike working in a retail job representing a pretty significant- Damn, he looks terrible. How old is he? fall since tutoring for some of Connecticut's wealthiest families. However, Mike still got off lightly in comparison to John Dupee, who as a result of his appearance on the show has now become homeless. Oh John walked into God. the sting house without saying a word and was so creepy that simply standing next to him was enough to terrify the decoy, yet she apparently had nothing to worry about as he stated that he was only there to watch the football. After revealing that John was simultaneously talking to more than one minor, he was arrested, interrogated, and given a notice to appear in court where he'd be trolled and heckled by the attendees as he pleaded guilty. And the judge actually in the case had to order the crowd to be quiet, to be orderly, because they had figured out who he was and what he was being accused of, what he was pleading guilty to. John Dupee was given an eight-year prison sentence beginning in August 2000. He does kind of look like William Defoe. 
2016, although this certainly isn't where the story ends. Only four months into his prison term, John's brother and sister were both killed in a car ah! accident, which happened on the very same street where the Sting House was located. What? And in case losing both of his siblings wasn't bad enough, there are unconfirmed anecdotes that John was also disowned by his parents after the episode went live. He was released from prison on the 24th of July 2018, serving just two years out of his eight year sentence. Yet after being released, John was forced to register on a public offender list, which displayed his address as a Connecticut homeless shelter. After three years in the shelter, John was able to move into a group house, although in October 2021, only two months after moving out of the homeless shelter, John violated his probation in an unspecified way and was sent back to prison for another year and two months. Since his release in December 2022, John has been residing in a shelter for recovering addicts, although John Dupee isn't the only person oh, on this shit. list who's been back to prison as Joshua. Yeah, nah, like, it's like, I can't say I feel bad, but like, god damn, that shit, it, it, his shit just got worse and worse, bro. His life literally got worse and worse. The plumber. Cologne also recently violated his Damn. probation. Joshua was the New York plumber who locked the door behind him after entering the sting house, stating that his biggest nightmare was ending up on a Chris Hansen episode. After Josh comes out of the bathroom, Chris is already there waiting for him. I know who you are. You know who I am? Yes. And as a result, Josh is unbelievably honest, laying out his intentions immediately. After being taken back to the station, yeah. he'd incredibly admit that this wasn't the first time that he'd met up with someone underage, which eventually helped the court to secure a seven year prison sentence. After this thing happened, but before Josh went to prison, he was still working as a plumber and would admit to a co worker that he was very remorseful and would happily take back his crazy Russian ex, then go back to that house with Chris Hansen. On his really bad days, he would talk about how he doesn't want to die alone and that he knows that he'll never have a semblance of a normal life again. Josh was sent to prison a Damn. few months later in early 2016 and would serve three years out of his seven year sentence. However, this wouldn't be the last time that Josh ended up. Oh oh my gosh. In September 2020, idiot. approximately one year after being released from his first prison stint, a post was made to the TCAP forum stating, Joshua Cologne was convicted yesterday after spending a few months in prison for a probation violation. Four years jail, execution suspended after six months, probation nine years. This guy will never learn. Josh's second prison term came to an end in March 2021, after which his former co-worker and friend took to Reddit to explain the reason for the sentence. He contacted me after he got out of prison him for a second time, letting me know that he'd been framed. Apparently he wasn't allowed to have any pictures of any children on his phone. His sister shared a picture of his niece in a chat that he was in and he got locked up for it, his explanation. Interestingly, if you now search Josh's name on an inmate search engine, it states that Joshua Cologne is or was recently- Wait, so what happens if you're with somebody? Like if you happen to find somebody who you who wants to be with you and you have a kid with them, like are you not allowed to even- like, how does that shit work? Yeah, you know, also, you can't trust Reddit. But, like, how does... But that aside, if you are not allowed to have, like, pictures of kids or something like that, how does that work? An inmate currently at the Connecticut Department of Corrections, CTDOC, located in Weathersford, CT, leading many to believe that Josh is now back in prison for a third time. Damn! But what happened to the wealthy accountant who Chris recognized from the I train? remember that, dude! His name was Charles Lawrence, and after walking into the Sting House, the following exchange occurred. No, Chris. What are you doing? But this is the first time I've caught anyone who I know. After which Charles was arrested and taken back to the station for an interview. Throughout the interrogation, Charles made the hilarious claim that because of his poor eyesight, he read the decoy's age as 18 instead of 13. Come on, dog. Come on, man. You gotta do better than that, bro. You gotta do better than that, bro. Why don't you ever sit down? I just sat down, man. <laughs> I literally just sat down watching the whole car documentary. Every time he was 18, my eye got scratched. My glasses were fit. I'm looking, I thought he said 18. I swear to God, I would never, ever in my entire life be a 13 year old. However, Damn. the judge wasn't dumb enough to buy this excuse, who sentenced Lawrence to two years in prison, Damn. which he'd served between June 2016 and June 2018. That's it. Whilst in prison, the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants, under which Lawrence was employed, confirmed that Mr. Lawrence's AICPA membership I ain't gonna lie, it seemed like you don't get that much time for this shit. Chip was terminated, effect- It seemed like it'd be different for different people though. Other dude had like seven years, but only served- I go, I guess he only served like three.
effective May 25th, 2017 because of a final judgment of conviction for a crime punishable by imprisonment for more than one year. Chris also mentioned that Charles had a second job as a commercial real estate agent, and after finding Charles's LinkedIn, it states that he's the president of a company called Lawrence Real Estate Enterprises Inc., which is still active today and lists Charles as the company's CEO. What? However, Chris did mention on his podcast that Charles had some issues with keeping his license. I'm not clear as to whether or not he's still involved in commercial real estate. There was an issue oh, yeah, with his yeah. license after his... Yeah, that is true. Different different states and shit. ...conviction after he pleaded guilty. Although, even if he was... Yo, Katie plays a presage. ...was able to, it's unlikely that Charles would get much work these days given his reputation. It may too... Hell no, I'm not joining Kick, man. <laughs> I've just seen someone say it. 2021, a post was made to Reddit explaining that they saw Charles Lawrence living in an over 55s complex, which has been confirmed as true after looking up the address listed on his public offender registry. This page also shows the most recent photo of him what? taken in mid 2018, exhausting all of the information that we have on Charles Lawrence. However, we yo, so not like people will always know where you live. People will always know where you live, bro. What's wrong with Kick? Nothing wrong with Kick. Look at you trying to start the pot. Ain't nothing wrong with Kick, but it's like I have no reason to join Kick. You know? Once I got a motherfucking bag. We've got plenty of dirt on the now infamous Stephen Buchanan, who gained notoriety for showing up to the Sting House with duct tape, a camera, and various weapons you in freak! his car. This was extra terrifying as after arriving at the house, he refused to enter and rather tried to coax the decoy into getting into his vehicle. Do you want to come in? Do you want to go? Can you just like come in and we can chat for a little bit? What do you want to do? After being confronted by Chris, Buchanan tries to blame his depravity on the PTSD he got during his military oh, time brother. in Iraq. Although despite this impediment, Buchanan still served three years in prison, after which fans of the show began to notice that the story he shared with Chris wasn't entirely accurate. A user by the name of Bud1985 took to Reddit in a post reading, Stephen Buchanan, this took me a good hour of searching through old pics from Iraq but I finally found it. I served with his turd. Bud continued in the comments by stating, when he was active duty, he was a tank mechanic. And how do I know this? He was my tanks mechanic. He would do maintenance on it in the motor pool every Monday. He never went on a single mission. He never seen a minute of combat. He may have been through some mortifier, but that's it. It pissed me off so bad when I heard him blame it on PTSD. Reddit though. Reddit though. The most recent photo of Stephen Buchanan comes from July 2022, which accompanies a further update from Chris Hansen's podcast. And as far as we can tell, he still lives in Connecticut with his parents. I mean, they have the pig, but it's like, what if he just found it? Yo, like, people be doing weird stuff like that, bro. Like, people will literally put threads on, like, Twitter and shit like that, but never, like, threads about a person saying how they knew them and, like, never even spoken to them before. And then you go to look for the thread again, and it's deleted parents and he's working driving a, a large truck also explaining that he was able to have a conversation with Stephen's father i called the number we had for Stephen buchanan and a man picked up and it, it actually sounded a little bit like Stephen buchanan and i i asked for Stephen right away the man said is this chris hansen and i said yes it is this is why you're calling i said i'm calling for Stephen buchanan and and the father had the tone of a man exasperated with having to deal with the circumstances around his son he told me that Stephen has moved mm. on with his life and essentially that he wants to only look Look forward and then the senior Buchanan asked that I never call the number again. But while Stephen has done a pretty good job of moving on with his life, this has been significantly more difficult for Jeff guy. Sokol, who became arguably the most notable predator in Chris Hansen history after bringing a pepperoni pizza to the Fairfield Stinghouse. The iconic episode became etched in YouTube history as Jeff seemed so relaxed about the confrontation that he was only able to focus on his dinner. I want to know a little bit more about you first. Can I eat first? After Jeff Jeff spent 16 minutes demolishing his pizza. He'd offer Chris a slice on the way out. You can take your pizza if you like. You want a slice? I'm good, thank you. And even after being taken back to the station, Jeff maintained the attitude that he hadn't done anything wrong, according to a source who was at the station with him. He kept his cool. He was pretty happy that he was going to be able to get out of this. Be able to get I was in jail with predators. Hold on, what the fuck was you doing in there, man? Who were you? <laughs> what did you do? The lawyer the really take care of his case. While Jeff seemed confident that he wouldn't receive any charges, this didn't alter his reality, as after going through three different lawyers, he'd be sentenced to two and a half- Yo, I ain't gonna lie, man. I'm like, if, if I didn't end up being a streamer or like a YouTuber, I could see myself doing this type of shit. Because this is just petty, bro. This is just petty. As soon as you see a nigga, 
So how was the pizza? <laughs> were you really enjoying the pizza or were you just nervous because you were meeting a little kid? Don't walk away, man. Yo, who gave you the haircut, a little kid? Because it looks kind of fucked. <laughs> looks kind of trash. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> That shit is terrible, bro. A few is in prison beginning on the 27th of May. Clarify. Oh my God, I'm running ads. I'm running ads. I'm running ads. 2017. This is why, this is why I'm so sick of streaming. <laughs> That's why I'm so sick of streaming, bro. Nah. Whilst locked up, the Jeff SoCal episode became so popular that fans of the show tracked down the restaurant from which the pizza had been ordered and began to visit the restaurant asking for the exact same pizza that Jeff had what? gotten. What? The restaurant has since had hundreds of positive reviews, many of which subtly reference- You have to be better at saying shit. Or maybe you have to stop being fucking brain dead and thinking like fucking stupid. Oh, I want to say something so worse than that, bro. <laughs> I want to say something so worse. Maybe if you weren't a fucking weirdo, you wouldn't have to like rethink what is being said. Niggas say, niggas say like random generic stuff. Like I had a long day and be like, yo, what? Yo, you gotta, you gotta word that better. Long what? What was long? Yo, stop being weird, bro. I feel like all these kids is just, their mind is just, ugh, bro. You can't say shit, man the Jeff SoCal incident, and according to an email sent to us by a fan, the restaurant had to eventually ask people to stop asking for the SoCal special. But it's okay. That, it's okay. 2023. Going in, in another direction, man. And I'm so excited. I'm so excited, bro. I can't wait. Although there doesn't actually seem to be any evidence for this claim. By the time Jeff was released from prison in June 2019, his appearance on the show had racked up a view count in the <laughs> tens of millions, leading Jeff to try and change. I'm not to quit streaming 2023. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> bro, it's just the fact, bro, it's just the fact. It's, it's just like too much, man. I think like, I think when, I think I'm just, you know, I'm just growing older. I, I'm getting more like older bro to where some shit is just not funny no like it's not funny no more it's just annoying like i feel like if i was younger you know some of the stupid shit that chat's been saying i'd be like <laughs> but now it's just i see some of this shit and i'm like <sighs> it's just you know it's just it's just old bro it's just it just sucks bro and his name legally to Sonny Derek Porter. Sokol actually went to court and petitioned to change his name to Sonny Derek Porter. A few years ago, I was arrested as a part of a sting operation trying to meet a girl who was underage. The sting was part of an- But I still love y'all, man. I, st I still love y'all, man. <laughs> You've been old. Okay, look, whatever, bro. But it, it's it's like, I still love y'all, bro. Of course I still love streaming. It's just, the you know, I've, did, I've been doing this Monday through Friday for like, two years 6 p.m the same time for straight like you know boom ba boom boom consistent boom ba boom boom and i think it's just you know time for a motherfucking change man time for the next not a change but the next step man the next chapter like it is a it's a brand new chapter chat it's a brand new chapter chat man you know i'm dealing with a baby crying all this shit shit in his pants yo literally he just be sitting there chilling i change his diaper just change this diaper i look at him I'd be like, I love you, man. And the nigga shits again. I just changed your fucking diaper. Why do you wait until I change your diaper, snug it in, and you chilling, and then all here is, and he's like, are you kidding me? And then it's like, I gotta get on stream <laughs> to more kids just spewing stupid shit out their mouth, bro. Yo, if I wasn't streaming, I could see myself doing this. Doing, being a pedophile, what? Huh? Clarify! Clarify! <laughs> Chat is so fucking dumb, bro. I can't get it. <laughs> oh my god, bro. <laughs> Clarify! Uh, let's finish this fucking video, please.
the nationally syndicated TV show, Crime Watch Daily, Hanson vs Predator. This episode is now available online, along with many other troll videos and nasty comments from fans of the show. In the aftermath, I have experienced humiliation, harassment, and embarrassment. So? One could argue that this was justified, but I have surely lived with much remorse since the arrest. Since my current name will always be- Whose fault is that? It's yours, bro. Nobody told you to fuck with little kids, weirdo. Link via a simple internet search, I am requesting authorization to change my name. Damn, y'all talking about his handwriting? I ain't gonna lie, chat. My handwriting is worse than this like if this is bad handwriting to y'all y'all don't want to see what my shit looks like i'm working hard to be a better person overall and making a sincere effort to treat everyone with respect i hope to meet new friends and acquaintances and wish not to be judged based on one gigantic mistake i made a few years ago i hope to be judged for the person i really am the person i am today more than anything i would like a second chance at a happy and safe life Too late. however the name change was eventually rejected which only led to more trolling oh. it was then discovered that jeff had been forced to sell his apartment and according to this reddit comment how do you sell an apartment? I didn't know you could do that. Which isn't the best evidence, Jeff moved in with his parents in blank. It seems like he comes from a pretty affluent family, so he probably just mooches from his parents and stays low key. Damn. The most recent photo of him comes from early 2021, which unfortunately marks the final piece of information we have on Jeff Sokol, because despite being one of the show's most notable people, he certainly kept one of the lowest profiles. Damn, bro. Like I said, you know, can't feel bad when you, you know, you made that decision, but jeez, imagine you just, you just trying to change, you know, change, be better. And then Sunny V2 drop a video on you. It get 4.4 million views. And now people are like back to trolling. You can never escape it, bro. It, it's it's going to be a cycle. Might die down for a little bit, but then the next, the next YouTuber that's blowing up that does like docu style videos, they going to talk about your ass, man. That shit. I think I think even Patrick made something on 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 these niggas too. Golly, man. Golly G. Golly G. Can y'all stop spamming NF? Y'all really want bro, y'all talk about NF. I'm gonna go like people are asking for NF. I'm gonna play NF and all y'all are gonna be saying this is ass. This is trash. Y'all are gonna like put the sleep emojis and all this shit, bro. <laughs> y'all are gonna put the sleep emotes and all that shit. Why do y'all do that? Like what? Y'all, do y'all realize how that made me look? Like what if NF comes across my videos and then he just sees my chat spamming L's, but he'll see me fucking with it. So, you know, it's not, it's not me. It's just the chat. Chat can have their own opinion. <laughs> chat can have their own opinion, man. You know what? I'm gonna check it out, man. <laughs> I'm gonna check it out, man. NF. Oh yeah, don't he have an album dropping? No, 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 please. Motto, chat, it's three minutes. It's four minutes, chat, chat, it's four minutes.